So we're well into 2016 and the question I'm looking to answer in this video is whether full HD monitors are still worth purchasing. So to help me do that, here is my review of the ASUS MX279H monitor. So what's up guys, Sam here, and let me answer to those of you wondering why I even own a full HD monitor, and that is purely and simply down to the price point. As of this video, I just simply couldn't justify the money that it would cost to buy a 4K monitor. I'm not actually even shooting on 4K yet, and so a 4K display just really is not necessary, and I prefer to spend my money on other gear. There's heaps of other gear that I prefer to get before forking out all that cash on a 4K display. So with that out of the way, to kick things off, let's start with the specs. As the name suggests, this is a 27 inch display and it's packing an IPS panel, which basically means that it has both great viewing angles, 178 degrees to be precise according to the ASUS website, and it means that it has great color reproduction. On the back of the device, we have two HDMI ports as well as a VGA input for all those old schoolers out there, a line-in input, a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack input, and finally a port for power. Now, you might be thinking, huh, that's not a lot of ports, and you'd be right. Given this monitor is a few years old now, it doesn't include Thunderbolt and we are stuck to just the two HDMI and single VGA ports, which may be a nuisance for some people and you will know who you are, but for the rest of us, these three ports are definitely enough. Looking at the design now, and this is no doubt where this monitor shines. This display features an ultra slim, virtually bezel-less design with this silver sundial stand as its base, which by the way is a sleek combination of metal and plastic, making things feel pretty damn premium. Now, I say virtually bezel-less because there are definitely some really thin bezels there, and they've included this black thin edge around the screen, which would have been epic if it weren't there, but perhaps the technology wasn't there at the time. Now, we have the ability to tilt the monitor back and forth to give us multiple viewing angles, but unfortunately, the disc-shaped base is only for aesthetics and doesn't give us the ability to swivel and rotate the monitor around, and there is also no way to adjust the height. Down here we find our touch sensitive buttons, but because ASUS have included these physical bumps below the visual indicators, it makes it super easy to know when you've touched them, which means we don't have to spend ages searching for the right place to touch. They are touch sensitive, so they don't physically press in, but it's a nice touch from ASUS to have the bumps there. Opening up the menu gives us a splendid window, which allows us to adjust the viewing modes of our monitor, as well as color and image controls, input selection, and a system setup window. It's pretty easy to navigate through and there's also some convenient shortcuts to brightness and color modes as well as a few other items which makes changing settings a breeze. Heading once again to the back of the monitor and one thing I failed to mention is this monitor actually includes audio speakers built in which means if you don't own any speakers this will have you covered. Here's an audio test so you know what they sound like. Generally we want to let as much light hit the sensor as possible and I'll explain why in a bit. Right now I'm at a shutter speed of 1 125th of a second, so we'll first bring that all the way. So enough to get you started, but long term you'll probably want to look into some proper speakers. So aside from that, really that's all the basic specs and the key information you need to know about this display. So let's chat about the real world performance and my honest opinion. So to address the elephant in the room, I need to talk about the fact that this is only a 1080p image that's stretched across 27 inches. So being a monitor this big with only 1920 by 1080 pixels to output, you do actually start to notice the pixels when you're working with really detailed things, mainly like text in a Word document or something similar. And so you do start to notice the pixels in those sort of settings, but I do need to stress that this is only very slightly and for the most part, it's really, really hard to notice. Now in saying all that, I've actually never used a 4K monitor and the day that I do start using one, I'm guessing that I'll probably wonder how I ever got by with 1080p images across a 27 inch display. But until that day comes, this monitor is actually more than enough for what I need. For me, in order to go full steam ahead with my attempt at creating a minimal desk setup, I really only wanted one monitor instead of a dual monitor setup and 27 inches was really the perfect size for my desk. It fits really snugly between my Edison light globes and also the audio engine speakers that I have, but it also gives me plenty of screen real estate for video editing purposes. And on top of that, it's super attractive, which is a massive added bonus. Now, I did mention in my ultimate desk setup video that I designed my whole setup to be a mobile workstation, which effectively means you can unplug and plug in another laptop and you can keep using the setup without any interruptions at all. But on the flip side, it also means you can take your laptop and edit in front of the TV, watching Netflix or whatever you wanna do. But to be honest with you guys, 
I actually haven't done that yet since I created that desk setup video. And the reason is because I've loved working with this massive display. I feel like it makes me super productive having all that screen real estate. Now, because I'm trying to give you guys a real world opinion on this monitor, there is one place where I've noticed the lack of pixels and that is when I'm watching YouTube videos. Now, I probably wouldn't notice except for the fact that I'm often watching my own YouTube videos across multiple devices just to mainly cross check audio mixing and video quality as well, just to kind of check so I can change in the future if I need to. And I have noticed some slight differences in the image quality between some of my other devices and then watching them on this display. My MacBook Air and my Galaxy S6, they both play YouTube videos crispy as hell, but for one reason or another, YouTube videos just don't look quite as good on this monitor. Now again, I rarely notice it when I'm watching other users' videos. I only notice it for my own videos and that's because I've actually made them. So whether that will be an issue for you, look, probably not is my best bet, but again, that's something you're gonna have to decide. Anyway, to wrap this all up, given the price point and the super attractive design, I have absolutely loved this monitor. For those of you who have already delved into the 4K world, then I would probably steer you away from buying this monitor, only because I reckon the downgrade to a 1080p image across 27 inches could be a little bit obvious to your eyes, but again, that is just me guessing. But if you are looking to buy a monitor that has plenty of screen real estate, good color reproduction, and is just damn attractive to look at, then I could honestly not recommend this monitor more. Anyway, that's about it for today's video. Feel free to ask any questions that you have in the comments below, and I'll do my best to answer them. But thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys later.